So we are on chapter five um, in Gregor and the Marks of Secret. And when we left them yesterday, um, it wasn't really like a cliffhanger or anything. It was just that Gregor was, um, you know, just attacked by rats that he didn't know. One of them was Twirltongue, who's very persuasive. One of my favorite lines from the book, you know, is that she's so persuasive, she almost convinced Rip Red he was well-liked. Um, and you don't understand that unless you've read all the books, right? So, I mean, all the books up till now. So we get that. So he made it out safely, um, but it kind of rattled him. So chapter five. During the next few weeks, Gregor traveled down to the Underland almost every day, but there was no word from Rip Red. Gregor didn't know how... Gregor didn't know how to interpret this. Had Ripper just killed the Bane and moved on with his life? Or had he run into some kind of trouble? The rat was the most resilient animal in the Underland, but as the silence continued, Gregor began to wonder if something had happened to him. Gregor could tell that Vickis was concerned as well. It is not like Ripred to leave me in the dark so long, he confided in Gregor, who constantly fought down the temptation to tell Vickis all he knew. But he couldn't. Not only because Rippert had advised silence, but also because the old man was so burdened by his wife Sullivan's upcoming trial, Gregor didn't want to add to Vickis's cares. At first it had looked as though she might simply be reprimanded and perhaps dismissed from her position. However, as the actual death tolls from the plague became known, there had been growing, growing pressure from not only the rats, but the humans too, that she be put on trial. People were saying that Dr. Naviv, who had carried out the research, had been executed for her role in the epidemic, and she had only been a scapegoat, like someone to blame. That it was Salavette, as the head of the Regalian military and the person who had given orders to develop the plague as a possible weapon, who should accept the ultimate responsibility for the plague. So Gregor kept his thoughts to himself and tried to focus on the good things about his summer vacation. Like how his mom was getting better every day, and how Lizzie's letters said she actually seemed to be enjoying camp, and how there, wa there were really a lot of fun things to do in the Underland if you weren't being attacked. Swimming, exploring caves, playing ball games on bats. Sometimes there were even parties. One morning, just as he and Boots had landed in the high hall, Hazard came running up to Gregor excitedly with a small scroll in his hand. It's an invitation to my birthday party for turning seven. You will come, won't you? He burst out before Gregor even had a chance to open it. Sure, we'll come, said Gregor. So what do you want for your birthday? I don't know, said Hazard. He looked to Luxa for guidance. Maybe he would like something from the Overland, something we do not have here, she suggested. Hazard nodded vigorously. Yes, something I've never seen. Hmm, I'll have to think about that, said Gregor, but he already knew what he wanted to get Hazard. The violin from the museum had brought a good price, enough to live six months. That's a lot because they have to pay rent and like phone and electricity and groceries for six months. That violin is worth a lot. At the moment, every penny did not have to be counted. So on the morning of the party, Gregor and Boots took the subway to the big store down, the big toy store downtown to shop for Hazard's gift. Gregor found what he wanted at once. It was a plastic disc with animals around the outside of the ring. Uh, listen to what he explains and see if you know what it is, because you probably all had one. I know I did. And my kids. You spun an arrow around and it pointed at an animal. You pulled a lever, or if you're old like me, you had to pull a string. And it played the sound the animal made. Do you guys know what that is? I'll have to find a picture later. Since Hazard was such a whiz at imitating creatures in the Underland, Gregor was pretty sure he'd get a kick out of the toy. Boots found a little set of jungle animals co to go with it, and then, because she'd been really good about not pestering him about it, Gregor told her she could pick out something for herself. This was a big treat, and Boots took it very seriously. She tested out almost every toy in the preschool section before she saw it. 
a princess dress up set. It had three pieces, a plastic tiara studded with jewels, a gauzy pink skirt with an elastic waistband, and a scepter that lit up when you pressed a button, kind of like a wand. Boots was overcome by the costume's beauty. I can get this, Grigo, because I am a princess? She asked hopefully. Okay, princess, put it in the basket, he said, but she couldn't let it go. She carried it all the way home, hugging it tightly to her chest and occasionally murmuring, P is for princess. The second they got into their apartment, Boots had to put on her princess outfit, which was, in fact, fabulous, and they headed off to the party in the Underland. Mrs. Carmachi had one of those cameras where you took a picture and it popped out of the camera and developed on the spot. We might know them as, like, Polaroids. Shiloh just bought one with her um, gift cards from her birthday and Christmas. She made Gregor stop by the apartment to get it. I want pictures, and take some for the birthday boy so he can remember his special day. Luxa had gone all out with the preparations. The arena was festooned in swaths of bright colored cloth. Long banquet tables were piled with food. A huge cake, decorated with bats, cockroaches, and other animals, sat in the place of honor. And there were about 15 musicians playing cheery music. Hazard dashed up to them the moment they arrived, and Gregor let him have his presence then and there. He was so fascinated by Gregor's gift that he sat right down on the moss to play with it, pulling the handle again and again to hear the horse neigh and the turkey gobble and the dog bark. After several minutes, Luxa gently reminded him he had guests to attend to. The place was packed with excited kids, swirling bats, and even a dozen cockroaches. The bugs immediately surrounded Boots, speechless with her with admiration with for her princess outfit. Boots climbed up on her friend Temp's broad black shell and gave a demonstration of how the scepter worked, flashing it on and off. What on earth is that child wearing? Gregor turned and saw his mom, bundled up in blankets, sitting in a chair near the banquet table. She was shaking her head in amusement at Boots. She's a princess, Mom, Gregor said. You can't expect her to show up at a party and hand-me-downs. He gave his mom a big hug. How does it feel to be out of the hospital? Just like heaven, said his mom. Gregor pulled out Mrs. Carmachi's camera to get some pictures. No one understood what he was doing until he got Hazard and Thalia to stop running around for a minute and snapped a great shot of the two of them with their arms and wings wrapped around each other. As the image slowly came into focus, the Underlanders were amazed. They had never seen photographs of themselves. The whole thing seemed like magic to them. When he rounded up a bunch of little kids for a group shot, they stood up very straight, arms stiff at their sides, serious looks on their faces. Remember, that's how people years and years and years ago, when we look at black and white photos, that's typically how they look because it was a serious matter. Like it wasn't just a, you could take a picture whenever. So that's what the underlanders are doing, like very formal. Gregor made them say cheese about 10 times until they were giggling and had forgotten how important it was to be in a picture. Luxa made an announcement that the dancing was about to begin and Gregor quickly took a seat next to his mom. He was not much of a dancer, even in the Overland, and the last thing he wanted to do, to, to do was strut his stuff in front of a bunch of people. Doing what? Minuets or something? Something with steps. 